everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Calm down. That's a lot, guys. That's a lot. That's a lot. The big guys don't get that much. I'm just a stoner, guys. Sit down. I'm going to be in the area all day. Or at least till five. Then I'm on my way. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Waxy Brown's Flower Power Hour on KKID 92.9. This is that show, guys, where me and my friends are. We're going to talk about. Shh, you guessed it, cannabis, marijuana, pot, all those things that you heard were bad, and had fear and stigma attached to them. We're going to talk about it. We're going to bring it out in the light, and we're going to do that in grand old fashion. I've got a good buddy of mine on deck, George Biswell. What's up, my can evangelist friend? What a great opportunity to be here. Me? I no, agree, buddy. Uh, yeah, me to be with you. <laughs> oh. I like this. Yeah, uh, it's a great opportunity. Thank you very much. I didn't want to do this over the phone. I think it's much cooler to be in oh, live. And I agree. Absolutely. We I appreciate agree. you driving in on yeah. such a beautiful spring day here yes, in the sir. Ozarks, right? Yeah, yep. definitely. <laughs> definitely. I got four wheel. I got the most ex uh, expensive car, but the most safest car on the road. I got a Subaru Outback. Legacy with wings, yeah, it, and jet fuel. It'll fly, but that's yeah. right, baby. There you go. He said, I I'm came in in grand old fashion. George yeah. Biswell came in on the Biswell mobile. We're into it. All right, 315. I got Justin Trowbridge, the hemp guy, is going to be calling in with Jared Elliott. This guy is this, I believe, is the CEO of Terabi Terabotics, right? Ter Terabiotics.com. That's the cool thing about shows like this is I get to learn new words like ter hold on, Terabiotics. Okay. I just learned, jo George. I'm just not so going to say it. No, but just so you know, I just learned how to say endocannabinoid like last week. Oh, well, that's, that's I good. was over here. Endocannabinoid. I was over here like endocannabinoid. Is there an android? Uh, What's happening? Yeah. But we're, Endo we're, system. We're here today, right? The master yeah. control system. So Jared's going to talk about soil on a commercial uh, commercial level. They're talking about hemp and uh, and other things. So we talk about soil a lot on the uh, on the show. My buddy, uh, my buddy Jeff out there, Jeff Underwood likes to say loyal to the soil. I dig that part when people say that. Three thirty, I got Ryan and Corinne from Midwest Canna Expos. Guys, these guys are the folks that are putting on those big parties all over the place. The Bud Tender Appreciation Events. The uh, Blaze Party that's happening at uh, at St. Louis. Uh, what's the, what's the, the big Union Pacific? Yeah. Not Union Pacific. <laughs> Union I, Station. I know. <laughs> Union Station. That's right. It's at the Union Pacific Station. <laughs> it's at the Union Station in St. Louis. That's going to be a wild event. Um, I'm emceeing a couple of those events and, and hosting some of the contests there. It's going to be a, a really good time. But and that's called Blaze. Is that Blaze, right? Blaze. Yeah. But I also have to say, these guys are brand new sponsors to the Waxy Browns Flower Power Hour. And how cool is that? That we've got sponsors out there that know how to throw these parties, man. I'm stoked. Four o'clock, we got Chip Paul on. Man, I'll tell you what. You said it earlier. Our master control system, endocannabinoid system. That's what we talk about a lot on this show because science matters, right? Science, science matters. Science does matter. Right. So we've got Chip Paul on. He's an endocannabinoid forensic researcher. Right, I'll, like I'll be listening to that on on the way back to KC. I'm saying that'd be a good time. <laughs> Plus, we have it, uh, George. In case you miss anything on the uh, Waxy Brown Flower Power Hour, we now have it on our YouTube channel as well as uh, my my marketing guru out there, Justin Trowbridge, you has us on uh, www.waxybrownsflowerpowerhour.com, which is really fun. On. It's fun to say. Yes, it's fun to it say waxybrownsflowerpowerhour.com. Right. Well, it's important we have somebody that's got a On master's weed. in marketing. Right, a master, yeah. He right. Wields it like a like a lightsaber, man. I've seen oh. him slash through problems like I've never seen before. Which, to be real, and I'm, I'm going to go a little off script here, and not that I'm ever on script, but right. if you're in the Missouri industry and uh, in the cannabis industry and you want visibility and you want a spotlight on your brands and things like that, you need a guy like Justin Trowbridge. Like, I can't tell you how much he's elevated my business and some of my other friends out there. He's gone on and helped them through some of their stuff as well. So if there's a project you want, or uh, or maybe you want someone to handle like the the cool the cool and the goofiness of what we've got going on in the cannabis industry, that's my dude to go to, man. So 420, we're gonna talk about Terps with Izzy Clausen, right from from uh, Radiance up there. She's got the uh, that really cool website www.greenb dash learn dot com. Don't forget that dash. Man, I got the dash right. right. Greenb dash learn dot com. I got that, baby. You got it. So 420, she's gonna come on. People, people I get so many good, uh, so many good call-ins and uh, and all that. But she takes it to the next level with that that, that cannabinoid education. 
So, and of course, at 445, I've got Ray from Weed Weather and Whatever up in Kansas City repping up, uh, up that part of the state, as well as uh, Can a Convict Project is going to be calling in because um, 40,000 Americans are still left behind while industry is making um, last year, I think it was $26 billion in the United States of America that uh, Big Can of made. So, man, they're almost making a, a uh, that's like a million for every uh, person locked up, guys. I think it's time to maybe change that a little bit. So, Can a Convict Project will be on. And they're going to talk about that. George, what's cracking, man? Well, uh, you invited me to come down and talk a little bit about cannabis and you, music and rock and roll. Yeah. And made some notes. We're on K-Kid. Now, yeah. Classic rock format, there man. There you go. You yeah. couldn't beat it. Yeah. You know, Bob Dylan I'm a huge turned fan. the Beatles on the pot. I, I, that is a fact. Yeah. That is a fact. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a real deal. The story goes that he was, you know, he was playing down in Greenwich Village. And he heard the Beatles were in town, and he wanted to hook up with them. And so he had his people call their people. They got together, and the next thing you know, they're blowing weed in the hotel. And I heard this story has it that, that, that the hotel was on a hill, and after they smoked it, maybe they rolled down that hill. Might I don't know. Been, I don't know. I, I saw maybe something. It changed there. their music, though. <laughs> so, and and I'm, a, I'm a huge Dylan head. Like, I'm a dead head big time. But actually, like, I'm a huge. I love lyrics, right? And that's why I love the dead is because Robert Hunter was their lyricist, right? He was also a lyricist for many of the Dylan songs. So I feel like Dylan was out there getting the guys goofy while Robert Hunter was making sure that he had some good lyrics, man, and making sure the scene rolled on. Greenwich Village also uh, birthed Paul Simon, another great oh, lyricist yeah, out no there, doubt, man. No doubt. Well, I was did a little research and uh, looked at the uh, top 10 of uh, Billboard. Uh, what they well, Actually, there's a top 19. And we're going to start with number seven, which was, uh, let's see, wait a minute. No, that would be, if I started ten, I should go to ten, huh? Ten, ten is yeah. first, well, and, and the, the thing, one through ten. The Doors, Light My Fire. You bet. And uh, that was Light My Fire, Light the, light the, light the Joint. Sure. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jim, uh, Jimi Hendrix did a big cover on that. And, uh, but he really didn't want to talk about that because he was afraid that, well, back in 1967, Canvas Pot, it was really a bad thing for uh, artists to be involved in. Sure. So he never really came clean with that ever, that that's what that song, that, that that's what the door's about. Interesting. But the doors, uh, uh, when the people who've written about the doors said that that's what Light My Fire was about. And then, of course, Bob Marley. Yeah. I mean, Bob Marley did a lot of work with uh, with uh, uh, 420. His, uh, his albums uh, uh, were all about cannabis. Sure. In yeah. fact, Bob... Uh, Bob Marley had a uh, his, I've seen uh, video footage of his cannabis fields and they look like uh, like fields and fields and fields of hemp like this dude didn't do it small like he was giving his cannabis out to a lot of folks helping out the villages things like that different areas different uh, residences it was so actually here's a quiz what uh, what heavy metal group at that period of time had a song about cannabis. Black Sabbath, yeah. Sweet Leaf. Yeah, see, he know you know it's your stuff. It's in my theme man. song, homie. Oh, <laughs> see, I didn't pay attention to that. Maybe I shouldn't have 420 before I got if you here. Hear the okay, if you listen to the Waxy Brown's yeah. Flower Power Hour theme I, song, if you hear the coughing that's going on in part of it, that's from Sweet Leaf. But that's their only love song. That only makes sense. Right. That that's only what, that's makes what sense. The, that's what the internet told me. I'm assuming they didn't have a huge passion for Iron Man. It, it was just, <laughs> just cannabis. Yeah, <laughs> might have been. And then uh, Neil Young, he came at number seven on this list with uh, Roll Another One. Right. Just like the other one. Because <laughs> that one was just as good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You've been hanging on to it. Yeah, you I know, sure I, would like a hit. I, anyway, <laughs> I'm a Neil, Neil Young, Young fan, man. Yes, uh, I'm not. Um, you know, I get that he's getting uh, off the Spotify and all that, but I, uh, I don't even know what Spotify is. I only know what Rolling Another One is, so I'm cool with that. So, uh, Aerosmith showed up as number six. Oh, um, uh, what is uh, Roofing Head? Is that the name? Rough, Roofing Head, something like that. Reefer Head. Reefer Head. There you go. See, Reef. I'm glad we got somebody that knows more than I. <laughs> we can see. I got that song lined up to play. Yeah, he's oh, gonna play that one. Yeah. Reefer Headed Woman. So yeah. Oh yeah, that yeah. is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And it's uh, it, it comes from a 1940 12 bar blues. Is what it comes from. No sure and, doubt. Uh, and well, <laughs> I've got drinks. Me. Uh, well, it's, it goes. Well, I've got drinks. Uh, me two fifths of whiskey, just to get half as high. That's right. right. Got to drink more whiskey and anyway, right. That was that. That was back in the twenties, the Roaring Twenties. Yeah. yeah. And that was, the, you know, just to be real, that was really brave to put those lyrics in those things. Well, like, cannabis had a big, big part in in the Roaring Twenties. Absolutely. And well, jazz. It wasn't yep. illegal. Jazz yet. would not be here if it wasn't for cannabis. I don't right. believe. 
from my from what I've read about, uh, you know, they they smoke it up and. Then yeah, what muddy water yeah, say? Yeah, give know. me champagne when I'm thirsty. Give me reefer when I want to get high. That's right. No <laughs> doubt. No <laughs> doubt. Uh, and then, of course, the uh, stones, everybody must get, uh, or the beat. Oh, that was Bob That's Dylan. That's Dylan, yeah. Yeah, everybody must get stoned. That was number Rainy five, day. Rainy Day Woman. Rainy, yeah, that was yeah. a good song, uh, with the exception, I don't like the whistle in it. The woo! I now, Sammy Hagar did a version of that, too, that really kicked some, some ass. Was it fun? Yeah, it was great. I have not heard that. We really? have to check that out. You might, you might need to cue that one up. That's a good one. I was, com- I was confused about my own notes. J- Jimi Hendrix, The Purple Haze. That's gotcha. the one that he really didn't want to talk about, but, of course, it was about you know drugs. Perps. Right. Mm-hmm. And yep. that he didn't want to do. I thought and that was a form of LSD back in the day, Purple Haze. Yes. I, I think I remember doing That's what your plug told yeah. you, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what my man told me. But, you know, the Beatles, uh, <laughs> Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, has nothing to do with drugs. No. No. Nothing, nothing at all. Absolutely It not. was written for his daughter's. She uh, drew a picture. Yeah, something. Right, right. right. Yeah. So, and you know, I, I Lucy heard an interview with Ringo, and he said after that, they started looking at all of their, their lyrics and, right. and, and the titles and, the, and, the, and oh, does this mean that? And right. really, it was just a coincidence. Yeah. So much that the Beatles even wrote lyrics. Uh, well, you know, John. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember which one that was, but, but they wrote the, oh, no, it was uh, I Am the it Walrus. The wa- yeah. It was the I Am the Walrus song, and that whole song was written because they heard people were, inti- were, were trying to figure out what their lyrics were. So they wrote lyrics. They were using Right. School kids to, right. to figure these lyrics out, so they right. wrote that in there to see what they come up with. And right. It was pretty wild, man. Yeah, because that song ends with "Everybody smokes." Everybody pot, smokes pot. Smoke, everybody smoke, smokes smoke, pot. Yeah. Yeah. Smoke, yeah, that was the uh, "I Am a Walrus." Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Wesley they got turned on. They, they're hoping music change. Yeah. Of course. I think I think we before Justin comes on, do we need to pay some bills? Uh, we can hang for a minute. We can probably do it afterwards. Okay. As sounds long good. As we got two breaks. Between now and the top of the hour. As long as you're not sending me um, an invoice, we're cool, baby. I'm, I'm, we're, <laughs> all right. We're good. We're good. He's calling in two yeah, minutes. It, it's so. good yeah. to send right. yeah. in, in, in the studio with the general manager. I, it usually doesn't work that way in the big true, radio. True story. They're off in a big office somewhere. This is cool. Yeah, this if I'm, cool. Uh, there's almost no accountability here on my part. It's <laughs> all on him. Uh, the uh, responsibility, <laughs> just a baby bit, but yeah. the accountability, I got nothing. Uh, we're good. Got a good thing Keep trucking, there, George. Yeah, there you we keep the owner out of the station. There you go. Do we? He, he definitely tunes out, but he, he's here. <laughs> you know, from ni- did I tell you that from 1967 to 1976, the top 200 billboard uh, had uh, mentioned uh, cannabis or pot or getting high in every one of those songs? Wow. I believe that. That was a, you know, just little things here and there. And what Lots year span was that? That would have been 67 to 1976. Which oh, is a lot. My wheelhouse. Yes. Yeah. Nine years, right. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a, a lot Well, we were talking there. today, and you were looking up that uh, KC95 out of St. Louis. the oldest rock station, classic rock station in America. In the world. In the world, it right. said. Yeah, that's right. And they, they sponsored our first uh, normal concert here in Rolla in 1976. Yeah, George it. was a big right. part of normal, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, you bet. And we want to tell a little bit of that story before you go, though, by okay. the way. After we get off with Justin, we need to talk a little bit. All right. But, so I was going to say, uh, with the, with with those particular years there, it only makes sense. But here's the other trick to that: is that I can listen to any song, in any country, blues, you name it, whatever, and I'm going to hear cannabis in it. Just so you know, that's how I'm going to. That's how I look at everything. Yeah. Well, it's uh, all perspective. Things can- <laughs> Th- that's just because uh, you're you're really a can evangelist. Because mm-hmm. a can evangelist is all things cannabis. I guess so. Then. So. Yeah. So have you been anointed yet? No, I, I don't. I, I, yeah, yeah, maybe <laughs> I'm waiting for him to give me the franchise fee. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> what's it take, man? Put me in the water. Yeah, I'm waiting for that franchise fee. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in, boys. The water's fine. There you go. There you go. That's right. <laughs> neither, the, neither the Lord nor earth got nothing on me now, boys. That's right. He's ready to go. I'm anointed. Yes, you are. <laughs> well, you know the name. We talked about it earlier when I was on the show a couple of months ago. And uh, my son gave me the name, and uh, but it, it it helps me talk about cannabis, and and that's really what what I'm all about. And uh, to uh, not just you know not just the, the fact that we enjoy the uh, the euphoria of the of the of the plant, but all the other stuff that's attached to it. And how old are you, George? I'm 72. What? How old were you when you started smoking pot? 22 years old. In all that time. Did you think you get to see this very moment with your own eyes? Uh, no, I didn't think I'd Even see being it. a part of normal and being a part no, of I thought we, we might get to a decriminalization level at some point. But for 17 years, I didn't consume at all. 
I was on a, I, I don't want to say I was a POW or anything like that. I was working in my job, required uh, a commercial driver's license. Yep. And oh, so I would say I was in jail too. So you're talking about <laughs> well being on the road. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Gotcha. So well, I worked. I worked in city government, and and right. got drug tested, and yeah. so right. um, I can I know the date, December the first, nineteen ninety four. I stopped, and I started again October the eleventh, two thousand eleven. Right. When the very day that I was retired. You ever going to stop again? No, 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 no I doubt that. I, right. I don't think you should. You got. Yeah. You no, and I, and I and I didn't really consume a lot of uh, CBD and the other things back then as much as I do now. I right. have a regiment that uh, my doctor says that I'm not in excellent health because I got a little high blood pressure, but I'm in really good health. So, and she, we contributed to the use of, of cannabis uh, and CBD. The I other use, cannabinoids. I use large amounts of CBD. I don't think you can take too much CBD. Yep. I really don't believe your body. Yep. You, you can take it as much as you want to take. Some yep. people say, oh, you only take me to take 10 milligrams a day. Well, I, that wouldn't work for me. <laughs> well, your, your body has an exit strategy yeah. for extra cannabinoids anyway. That's it's right. just not going to so, use so them. So right. it's right. not going to hurt you anyway. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. There you go. Yeah, all right. good. That's awesome. All right. Yeah, well, well we're that's about all I got on, on, the, on the music scene. Oh, unless you wanted to talk about rap, of course, and this is not a rap you know, song, but I, man, I they, heard a, I heard a quote this morning, and yeah. I, listen, I listen to rap, but this is oh, a classic rock format, right? Right. So I did hear a, uh, I saw something this morning. It said, uh, it said something like, uh, so you believe that rap is better than classic rock? Well, then you must be wrong and stupid. So, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go there. I'm not gonna go well, there. Don't go there. No, this, like, that's the crowd right. you hang out with. But in the it's morning. just, it just goes to show that that that. Uh, it is. I listen. I, to, I listen to hip hop all day. Yeah. So. Right. Uh, uh, I don't. Uh, the only music that I think maybe wouldn't have would be the uh, the traditional classical. You know, the Mozarts, but the people playing it probably are. They were high yeah. as kites, man. Yeah, they might have been. Yeah. Maybe somebody has. Somebody in the background has. Uh, I say in the background. When uh, uh, I he mean, had his hand up back You gotta there. think. You gotta think when when Bach was playing Bach, right? Yeah. That was before he got into Bachman Turner Overdrive, oh. which that was after he smoked grass. So <laughs> that's what, yeah, there you go. That's where they were then. I so. knew. I knew Waxy Brown had it all. All right. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Flower Power Hour, where we spend two hours talking about flower power. So I wanted to jump back on before we, we rush to song and dance uh, and say goodbye to uh, George Biswell. And because I know you came all the way down from Kansas City, George, we're grateful for that. Absolutely, this, on this, a great day. But yeah, this weather day. looks kind of nasty, so yeah, we're going to send you home. So. Well, well, thank you very much, and uh, I appreciate it. And as I said off the air, there, uh, folks, this is something that's not happening anywhere else. But in Missouri, I, I, I follow this kind of stuff. And this is exciting stuff happening for cannabis and radio. Because a lot of radio people don't want to do it because of the federal and all the other stuff that's related sure. to it. So right. you guys stay in there, and I'll be back. And I'll spend the next time I come, I'll spend the two hours. Car well, we're grateful, deal. man. You have an open door here. Now, um, he does he know about the Mo Fest going on at the Regalia? I'm certain everybody in Missouri does, yeah. Well, I mean, you got to come to that. Yeah, George. you got to be at Mo yeah, Fest, yeah. April yep. 2nd at yep. the Regalia Hotel and Conference Center. There you I'll go. Take us to a song. George, thank you so much for stopping by the Flower Power Hour. And we really appreciate you, my fam. You're good. And, and I'd like to leave this with your, your listeners. It ain't about the getting high. It's about saving lives. That's, That's right. right. Weed saves lives, y'all. That's right. There you go. Here it is. The Doors. Light my fire. 